Thank you for joining us for our online midweek service. We are praying that in just a few weeks, we will be able to gather back on campus for our Wednesday night services. Uh, but for the next few weeks, we will be gathering again as we have for months online. And so thank you for joining us. Now, I want you to stay tuned in to the entire service tonight. I believe with all of my heart that what the Lord has laid on my spirit for tonight's service is very, very important. And so I know you're going to enjoy the worship time. It's going to be uplifting and challenging. And I pray that God will use his word in just a few moments to challenge our hearts. And so let's go to church tonight. Let's worship him in this midweek service. Welcome to New Life. Good evening. We want to thank you for joining us. Would you stand with us as we sing and worship our God together? God, you are my God, and I will never praise you. Oh 
once again, this is our opportunity to give back to the Lord because He has been so good to us. Uh, even though uh, our economy has taken a downturn because of the global pandemic and the things that are going on in our country, God is still good. God is still providing for our needs and He has called upon us as His church uh, to provide for the needs of His church. God wants to use you and your heart in giving, your spirit in giving, your giving in worship to provide for the needs of the storehouse. So I pray tonight uh, that you will give as God has richly blessed you. Let's pray. Father, bless uh, everything that's given tonight. Uh, Lord, throughout the week, your church has been so faithful to give. And I do pray uh, that tonight you would stir uh, within our hearts to give cheerfully, to give because we love you, to give because we want to. And so Lord, use everything that's given uh, this week to further the gospel, to provide for the needs of your church, and God will praise you for that. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in the hard times that we face in life, we can trust and know that we serve a good, good Father who's caring for us and who's loving us. So why don't you stand with us right now as we sing Good, Good Father. Oh, I a thousand stories of one day Think your life, but I heard it take
you to take your Bibles tonight and turn to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, we'll read a few verses throughout the message this evening. But as you're turning, uh, I want you to know this evening, uh, if you'll allow me, I want to talk to you uh, as a pastor. Of course, for many of you, I am your pastor. I get the privilege of pastoring you every single week. And for others that watch us online, uh, I want to talk to you as a pastor as well. I want to talk to you tonight from my heart. See, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about our country in these days. Uh, the narrative that we are hearing on a daily basis lacks so much truth. It lacks so much compassion. Uh, it's burdensome to even be a part of and to hear. And yet as, as concerned as I am about our country and our culture, I want you to hear me tonight. I am concerned for the church. Um, there are some that are, are listening tonight that, that need to hear what I'm going to say uh, this evening. Um, COVID-19 uh, accomplished a lot of things in the life of the average believer. Some of those things were good, and some of those things were, were not good. Again, there's some listening tonight that God used this global pandemic to draw you closer to Him. God used COVID-19 to draw you closer to His Word. Because of the events of the last several months, you find yourself spending more time in prayer. Your priorities have been realigned. Uh, there are things in your life that you would say you've finally gotten them back on track. It has given you a, a new perspective. You really see now what's truly important. You have a renewed sense of appreciation of the body of Christ and, and even for the work of God. And you would have to look back at COVID-19 and say, even though it has been uncomfortable, you would have to look back and say, it's been good. But then there are those who have not fared so good. You are not reading your Bible. You have grown cold to the things of God. The separation has pulled you down. You have grown uh, indifferent in things that are happening in the world, you, you have an apathetic spirit toward. You don't see the need of getting back to church. You don't see the need of, of having a revival fire stirred again. You haven't had any meaningful prayer time in weeks. You're at odds with people that you once loved dearly. You've had even thoughts of, of not living a Christ-centered life. You are drenched in apathy and complacency and you are further away from the Lord today than you were pre-COVID-19. Thus, my burden tonight is for the, the large part of the church that is backslidden and away from God. If I ask you the question today, what is the one thing that's holding you back? What would you say? Is it like in our text? Is it living in the past? Is maybe you, uh, or maybe you are satisfied with where you are? For some, maybe what's holding you back is sin, whether it's known or whether it's hidden. For some, maybe it's the fact that you're not in the Scriptures. For some, there's, there's no walk with God. For others, maybe it's the fact that you're not serving tonight. The truth is you can fill in the blank. But whatever that one thing is tonight, isn't it time to choose to move past it? Isn't it time to press toward the greatness that God has 
for you. For we see in our text this evening for the Apostle Paul that one thing that he was not going to allow to keep him back any longer was his past. He made a decision that the past was not going to keep him from God's calling in the present or in the future. Let's read our main text tonight, verses 13 and 14. Very, very familiar verses this evening. Brethren, I count not myself, Paul said, to have apprehended. I, I have not attained, I have not achieved, I have not reached this mark. That I haven't finally finished my race. He said, I'm still working on it. So, so I'm not thinking of myself higher than I should. I'm not getting too big for my britches, Paul is saying. I have not apprehended. But this, and here's the key phrase for me, this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I've chosen to move past my past. See, all of us can relate this evening to this specific application. And even though the message is about a broader application, I do believe we, we need to at least focus for a moment on this specific application. We have all littered the past with mistakes of daily living. We have shed our tears and caused the shedding of tears by others. As much as I recall the joys and victories of the past, I also remember failures which also mark my journey. To make a list of those things that I should have done but have not, that's too painful. To make a list of those things which I ought not have done but did is even more painful. And yet, I want you to hear this. And I believe Paul understood this. And yet, God has given us grace. Aren't you thankful for grace? God has given us forgiveness. It's offered to those who are His children. We just read last week in our foundations reading from the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. And this is what the Bible teaches to the Christian. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Please hear me this evening and hear me well. Your past does not have to have a hold on you any longer. This one thing for the Apostle Paul was his past. And I would say to us that if we do not deal biblically with our past, we will be robbed of God's blessings for our life. Paul helps us know how to deal with, with these one things in our life. These one things that keep us from attaining what God has for us. These one things that, that these, these one things that keep us from greatness. These one things that keep us from reaching the mark, as it were, in our text. And so tonight I want to pull three truths from our text about how to make sure one thing doesn't keep you from the mark. Number one this evening, from the scriptures we see that reaching the mark comes, first of all, when knowing Christ intimately is the most important thing in our life. Reaching the mark, making sure this one thing doesn't keep me back, but reaching the mark comes, first of all, when knowing Christ intimately is the most important thing in my life. See, Paul made knowing Christ the most important thing in his life because nothing compares to Christ. Notice, if you will, in the same chapter, look back at verse number 7. He says, but what things were gained to me, uh, those things I count lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss 
for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, and yet I count those things as dung. Why? That I may win Christ, and that I may be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Pay very close attention. To verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. See, listen to me this evening. There are many listening tonight and you know of Jesus. There are many listening tonight and you know of about Jesus, but I would dare say that there are few listening tonight that you know Jesus on an intimate basis. Think for a moment. Let me give you a test. Think for a moment of the person in your life that you would say that you know the best. Maybe it's your spouse. For me, it would be my wife, Christy. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's a a sibling. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's a close friend. You you know their likes. You know their dislikes. <laughs> you know their pet peeves. You know what makes them tick. You know what food they like. You know what shows they watch. You know what music they listen to. You would say you really, really know them. See, if we're going to reach the mark That has got to be our desire when it comes to Christ. Paul said, I have suffered the loss of all things, but I have done it so that I may win Christ, so that I may be with Christ, so that he may be in me. He said, I've done all these things. All these things have happened so that I may know Christ. In verse 10, he describes the intimacy by which he desires to know Jesus. If you want to reach the mark, If you want to make sure that there's not one thing in your life that's keeping you away from what God has for you, I'm telling you the first step this evening is this, making sure that you know Christ intimately and that that is the most important thing in your life. But secondly and quickly, I believe also reaching the mark comes when I decide to simply deal with that thing that's holding me back. When I make a choice, when you make a choice to deal with that thing that is holding me back. Our text, main text verse, verse 13. He said, I have not apprehended, but this one thing I do. This one thing, Paul said, that I have taken action in. This one thing that that I have decided. This one choice that, that I have made. Of course it was done in the Spirit of God and of course it was done in the power of His Spirit. But there was a choice that Paul made to live in victory over his past. And I'm telling you tonight, there's somebody listening this evening that you need to make a choice to live in victory over that one thing that's holding you back. The same is true for us. It is up to us whether or not we are going to live in victory or whether we are going to live in defeat. Again, back to our Romans reading in Romans chapter 6. The Apostle Paul in verse 12 said, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. And then he says this, he says, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Again, you see the value and the power that God has sovereignly give, given us in, in, inside of our choices, in our decisions. See, I love the fact that as a Christian, I love what verse 14 in chapter 6 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Listen to me. 
that, that unbreakable chain to the lost person, that chain that cannot be broken, that sin that has dominion over those that are lost, has no more dominion over those that are saved. When Jesus Christ came into your life, when you became a child of God, the chain was broken. And you don't have to live under the bondage of sin. You don't have to live under the bondage of that one thing that is holding you back. And so tonight, what's keeping you from freedom? What's keeping you from victory? It's your choice. It's your decision to live past that one thing. It was a decision for Paul of dissatisfaction. He wasn't satisfied with living in his past. It was a decision filled with determination. You can hear it as you read this one thing I do. Reaching forth to those things. Forgetting those things which are behind. Reaching forth to those things which are before. Pressing toward the mark. It was a decision of clear direction. The Apostle Paul gives us a wonderful formula on how to make sure we're not held back. How to win our race. And it's first of all, knowing Christ intimately and making that the most important thing in your life. It's secondly, deciding to finally deal. Some of you need to finally deal with that one thing that's holding you back. And then finally this evening, it is reaching forth to those things which are before. Here it is. If you want to reach the mark that comes... It comes when I focus my full attention on the prize. When I get my eyes on the goal. He said, I'm not going to be distracted, verse 13, with those things which are behind. I'm going to reach forth. I'm going to stay focused on those things which are before. And he tells us in verse 13, or 14 rather, what those things are. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, if you've ever run in a race, you know that, that the most important thing is, is not just preparation, but the most important thing is knowing where the finish line is and staying laser-like focused on the finish line. Take a look at the picture on the screen. Some of you may recognize this. It's a bronze sculpture commemorating the race between John Landy and Roger Bannister. This race took place in the 1954 British Games in Vancouver. This was the race known as the Miracle Mile because it was the first race in history to feature two runners who had both run the mile in under four minutes. At that point, John Landy held the world record he was actually winning the race until this moment that this sculpture is made from. He was actually winning the race and then he made a critical mistake. What did he do? He looked back over his shoulder to check Bannister's position. And as you see in this picture, as he looked over his left shoulder, Bannister surged by him on the right, winning the race by eight tenths of a second. This statue was a sculpture from a, a photograph taken on that fatal moment. Landy even mentions while Lot's wife was turning into a pillar of salt because she looked back, he said, I probably will be the only one ever that was turned into bronze by looking back. He said it was my fatal flaw in the race. What am I telling you tonight? I'm telling you that if you look back, you're gonna miss it. If you're gonna reach the mark, you have got to stay focused on the prize, which is Christ Jesus. If you're gonna reach the mark, you have gotta make a decision this evening. You have to make a decision that I am, I'm going to deal with that one thing. And tonight, if you're going to reach the mark, you have got to make knowing Jesus intimately the most important thing in your life. So let me challenge you with this before we pray. Let me encourage you tonight. Be honest about where you are in your Christian walk. Don't lie to yourself. Don't just say that was a good message, preacher. No, where are you tonight? If you're going to reach the mark, be honest. 
You need to also align your goals with God's goals in your life. And then finally, I encourage you, keep moving forward. Don't allow this one thing to keep you from missing out on what God has for you. Would you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Father, I pray tonight that each one of us will deal with that one thing. Holy Spirit, you're already dealing with hearts right now. And God, I pray, Lord, it is this pastor's prayer, not just for myself, but for our church and anyone who is watching tonight. I pray that whatever is holding us back, we'll deal with it. And we will deal with it by making an intimate relationship with Jesus the most important thing in our life. We'll deal with it, leaning on your strength, but making the choice, cutting it out of our life, even right now, confessing it, walking away from it. And then, Lord, I pray that we will deal with it by keeping our eyes focused on you our prize, our treasure. Continuing to press forward, continuing to run this race. So God, I pray for your church. I pray that this message will have a great effect in the kingdom in days ahead. We love you in Jesus' name.